Hi everyone, I just thought I'd share with you some details that I've learnt um, having spent some time this afternoon on a HMRC uh, webinar. Now if, like me, you are a small business owner, if you have a limited company, even if you're the sole employee, if you're on PAYE, this might be of interest to you. The HMRC is offering these webinars um, all across this week. Um, I think if you just Google HMRC webinars, you'll probably come across it. Um, if you're struggling, then just message me and I'd be happy to share you the email um, where you can get yourself registered. The webinar was only 20 or 30 minutes, so it's quite short. You're not tra trawling through loads of information. Um, the other bonus as well is that you can ask questions directly in the webinar. So for those of you who go to webinar before, you can type your questions in. So if you have a very specific question for HMRC and you're not sure who to ask or where to turn, um, this would be a great opportunity to put your question directly to somebody at HMRC this week. So I'm going to talk about um, what I learned through this. Um, it from two points of view. One, as a small business owner where you have employees or you are the employee in question, uh, but also from the perspective of helping our tenants who might also be impacted uh, most recently by the job retention scheme announcement. So first of all, from, um, a, from a tenant's perspective, the information that I found useful to help my tenants is that HMRC today concluded that um, the job retention scheme does apply to agency workers, so those employed through recruitment agencies, even if they're not directly employed by the main employer. Now, I think this, for some of my tenants, will be a relief. Um, I don't know about you, but a lot of my tenants work through recruitment agencies, so they will be covered. Um, I suppose the, the important thing to bear in mind here, though, is it's the employer's responsibility to, play, to pay the employees now. Um, the, the, on the webinar, I learned that the portal through which an employer applies for the job retention scheme isn't even built yet, so you can't even apply for the job retention scheme at this stage. They're hoping to have this up and running by April, but what this means is there is a gap, a period of time, whereby employers need to pay their employees who perhaps don't have any revenue coming in um, before they actually get any payments from HMRC. I'm sure you'll have seen on the news today, um, Bright House and Carlucci have gone into receivership today, uh, presumably because they've not got the cash reserves um, to be able to see them through this difficult time. I have one tenant in particular who uh, works for a small manufacturing company and again they simply don't have the cash reserves to be able to pay him until they can reclaim through the job retention scheme, so unfortunately he's been laid off. Now one of the other things I did learn on this webinar is that if your tenant has been laid off by the employer, if that same employer takes them back on the books, they can then apply for the job retention scheme, so they are still eligible. So that may be a glimmer of hope for um, some tenants who have been impacted. Now if you're um, the employer, um, what you can do is if you work for yourself and you're on PAYE, um, you can effectively furlough yourself. Now, the job retention scheme will only cover 80% of your salary, so dividends are not included in that. So if you pay yourself mostly through dividends, then that unfortunately won't be covered. Um, again, if you have employees and you furloughed some of your employees, you need to notify them in writing. Um, they, you also need to pay income tax and national insurance as normal. Um, I would be hoping that HMRC are going to be issuing further guidance on this in the near future as to how to calculate this. Um, the other point in the webinar is that furloughed workers can be, are furloughed for a minimum of three weeks and that should be reviewed every three weeks. Um, and they will be paid up to a maximum of £2,500 per month. So you can see there's a little bit of discrepancy there in the timescales that they're talking about. So again, I'm sure there'll be further guidance at some point in how to calculate all of these allowances that people are allowed. And the final point was around statutory sick pay. So if you have employees that are claiming statutory sick pay because they're 7 or 14 days in isolation, um, you can again, as an employer, claim this back from HMRC at a point in the future. Now, that is capped at two weeks, so if they're off for longer than that, um, then unfortunately you can't get a rebate for longer than two weeks. There is further information on the gov.uk website and they also mentioned the ACAS website as well um, where some of this information should be available to you. 
So I hope that's been of use. As I say, if you are in this position, it might be worth you jumping on a 20-minute HMRC webinar this week.